The following is the Ten Commandments and my interpretations of them in regards to dealing with homosexuality. I was very disturbed, as you as you you may have known. I was very disturbed about uh, hearing Leviticus twenty thirteen, how homosexuality was an offense punishable by death, and according to Corinthians six nine, um, homosexuality was suggested as a characteristic that made a person unrighteous and undeserving and unworthy of the kingdom of God. And I've been, I've been visiting a uh, Christian homosexual LGBTQ friendly church since I was a young person. And, um, I know that they practice Christianity very well. And I witnessed on a YouTube video, a person, uh, basically expressing a very strong opinion towards a woman pastor to the point where she felt compelled to uh, ask him very strongly to leave her office because he was really uh, digging into her character and questioning her right and her license as a uh, moral license as a person practicing uh, clergy in a church. He was against a woman being a pastor, and he kept preaching Leviticus and Corinthians over and over again. And I hear that every time myself or someone that I witness is challenged as a homosexual not being Christian or LGBTQ behavior not being Christian, they, they continually preach Leviticus and Corinthians over and over again. And their, their, uh, their fight is this. We, we can't answer that. We can't argue that, that point. There's nothing in the Bible that says that uh, homosexuality is okay. But the following that I'm going to have read, read by AI, uh, is an analysis of the Ten Commandments and how, what I think um, is a violation of the Ten Commandments. I think I think uh, Leviticus and Corinthians, um, in a way, violate the Ten Commandments in some ways. The Bible is contradictory, and as a newly saved Christian, and by the way, they believe we're not saved if we're homosexual or if we're LGBTQ or support LGBTQ practice. Um, they think we're not saved. And I believe that's bearing false witness because Jesus loved us unconditionally. And um, I can also have an open mind to the uh, idea that Jesus might not have known about homosexuality. Maybe back in those days, uh, he did. He really did see it as an abomination. And uh, maybe if he came back, if he came, if he did come back to 2023 and saw people marching. And, and the pride parades and witnessed for himself true, truly witnessed, not falsely witnessed, witnessed for himself, um, that they truly are not necessarily doing any harm to other people, not committing any crimes or acting in an unrighteous manner. Hopefully he would change his mind. So my mind's open to the idea that maybe he did believe it was an abomination, but those were ancient, these were ancient times. The Bible was written in ancient times and, um, you know, things happen in ancient times as they even still happen today. We don't know everything. And if we, if humans don't know everything, we should be able to open our minds to learn something, maybe even challenge what these verses in the Bible say, and even maybe, uh, question them as a possible violation of its own 10 commandments. Here we go. The Ten Commandments. What Moses heard from God, you shall have no other gods before me. Sarah, let God guide us, not emotionally charged human judgment. The writing of Corinthians 6 9 was an interpretation of fear of disregard, written by man. 
Leviticus 20.13 was written by humans who judged human behavior homosexuality is disrespectful and deemed contemptuously and fearfully that punishment by death was indicated. What Moses heard from God, you shall not make idols. Sarah, beware of some of Jesus' followers. What Moses heard from God, you shall and all not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Sarah, are we taking the Lord's word or name in vain when we have such an absolute attitude about Christianity and LGBTQ? What Moses heard from God, remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. Sarah, how respectful is it to storm a place of worship and harass pastors regardless whether they are male or female? They preach on Sunday. All places of worship should be respected as holy. What Moses heard from God, honor your father and your mother. Sarah, I always honor the ones that made me into the world. I dishonor their disrespectful behavior if there is any. I believe that child abuse is dishonorable behavior towards children and has no regard for this commandment. What Moses heard from God, you shall not murder. Sarah, question Leviticus 6 9 immediately. Abolish the death penalty. Yeah. The shall not kill. What Moses heard from God, you shall not commit adultery. Sarah, I have heard that you're committing adultery if you're gay. Adultery against whom? Unless two men are each married to a woman or two women are each married to a man, this makes no sense. As long as you're having consensual relations with your partner or partners, you are not committing adultery. This is another excuse that people fearful of what they don't understand like to rationalize. What Moses heard from God, you shall not steal. Sarah, when fundamentalists who called themselves Christians storm the fortresses of LGBTQ churches, I believe they are stealing the church. What Moses heard from God, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Sarah, automatically assuming, according to Corinthians 6, 9, that gay people are criminal types is an act of bearing false witness. What Moses heard from God, you shall not covet. Sarah. It is a covetous act for people to harass and take hostage LGBTQ churches and LGBTs. These ten beneficial laws were given by the Creator God. Sarah E. S. Interpretation. Yeah, when you take an LGBTQ church hostage like that, um, and you intimidate them, as many have also done to abortion clinics, you are violating a commandment. I believe you're violating a commandment right there. You're you're bearing false witness, and you're also uh, stealing an institution. You're attempting to steal, shut down an institution against their will. You're acting like a thief, and um, when you when you propose killing, um, killing, you know executing people for being gay that's a violation thou shall not kill um let's see i'm trying to okay committing adultery that's another thing that got to me um adultery against whom um let's see when they storm the fortress of churches they are stealing the church um automatically assuming that gay people are criminal types is an act of bearing false witness. Um, coveting. Um, I, I, I wish it would apply to uh, thou shalt not covet one's church, one's place of worship. It is a covetous act for people to harass and take hostage churches and LG, LGBTQs themselves. So uh, once again, happy pride. And... Um, my interpretation, my analysis of the Ten Commandments and how I believe they should they should protect LGBTQs and LGBTQ churches. A place of worship should never be uh, condemned as unholy if it is done in Jesus' name. 
And um, if Jesus uh, believed that gayness was an abomination, if he wanted to have, if he was to have, if he should have had the human experience here on earth, I wish he'd been able to learn something new. Homosexuality does exist. LGBTQ does exist. Even, uh, even transsexual, transsexual exists. You know, if you're born, if you believe you're born in the wrong, uh, body, um, God made you unique and you have a, you have a choice. God gave you free will to do whatever you want with that body. Just do it mindfully. Um, I don't even believe you should be forced to have surgery if you don't want to, but you should act accordingly to what God made you. So, um, gayness, we got a lot to learn. We really do. Those, uh, that Leviticus and that Corinthians, I want to interpret them myself right now in some, in some way again, right now. Um, if, if there was witnessing of disrespectful public displays of affection or sexual act in public, I would support a discipline of offense. Again, not killing them unless we have to defend ourselves, unless they're trying to kill us. Maybe that, maybe that changes everything, but that has nothing to do with them being homosexual. And, um, the Corinthians thing, assuming that they're criminals now, here in the United States, if you if you expose yourself, if you if you have indecent exposure, or have sex in public, that can be considered an offense in the United States. Even now, if that's if that's what's in question, for goodness sakes, question you know question what you really need to question. Don't question someone's uh, sexual orientation. Don't question someone's uh, sex life. Don't question someone's love life. Don't assume that that we're, I will speak for myself too. I'm LGBTQ. I'm a lesbian. Um, and I'm Polly. Don't assume that I'm a criminal. If you do, I guard my heart against, against your attitude. That it's incompatible with my mental wellness process and my principles of universal ethics. I'm sorry. If, um, if gayness is incompatible with your Bible practice, I'm sorry to hear that, but your attitude is incompatible with what I'm doing and how I am living. And I need to just, I need to get away from you, away from you, but I'm not going to stop sharing with the world. Cause I know there are other people that agree with me and then, uh, wanting to, wanting to kill people, you know, having an attitude of execution against people just for being homosexual out of ignorance. If it's out of ignorance, I know, you know, not what you do. You know, Jesus' last words on the cross were, forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. Maybe you know not what your attitude is right now. Maybe you really are do believe you're doing and thinking the right way. But I beg to differ. I beg. I beg with all my heart and soul and bended knee to differ, you guys. Take care now. I'm done for the day.